Hi, I'm Tom Nisley, and I'm coming today from Redstone Glen uh, Fiber Arts Center, and I'm doing a reading today of my book, Spinning Tales, and illustrated by Megan Lloyd. Now, some of you might have remembered uh, my very first book uh, on The Weaver's Surprise, where the weaver was um, actually helped by a whole family of small mice. They had first chewed a hole in his rug, and uh, they felt so bad about it that they went back and they rewove the rug. Well, this is just a continuation of the story of those mice and how they work with the weaver. And uh, this time we're going to be doing a, a blanket. And I want to take you through all the different steps in our story today. So let's get started with spinning tails. In an old weather barn filled with hay and wildflowers, five fat sheep and a family of mice. In winter, they live in the cottage next door where an old man weaves rugs on a loom. The mice help the weaver with his work and sleep in a soft rag rug, toasty and warm. But in spring, they move out to the barn and make a nest in the hay. It's a bit scratchy and a bit itchy, but the hay smells sweet and there's plenty of grain to eat and they like to listen to the sheep down below in their stall. The sheep go ba ba ba. Early one morning, the mice heard a new sound. Clip, clip, clip. Ba ba ba. Ba clip, ba clip, ba ba clip. What is that? asked a curious mouse. It's shearing day, said Father Mouse, when the weaver clips the wool off the sheep so they'll be cooler in the summer. And so he'll have the wool to spin into yarn, said Mother Mouse. Peering down from the loft, the mice watched as the weaver rolled each sheep onto his backside. Belly facing forward, he took some funny looking scissors and began to clip. They're cut at getting a haircut, squeaked one little mouse. As the weaver worked, the fat round sheep started to look smaller and skinnier until finally all their fluffy wool was piled up beside them. The mice giggled at the sight of the nearly naked sheep. They won't be naked for long, said Mother Mouse. Their wool will grow back, and by winter, they'll be toasty warm in fluffy new coats. The mice watched as the weaver thanked the sheep for their fleece, gathered the wool into a sheet, and carried it to the cottage yard. There, three large pots stood. One was filled with water, hot water, and soapy water. Two were filled with clean hot water, and one was hung over an open fire. The weaver gently pushed the wool down into the sudsy pot to soak. He returned to the barn and climbed the ladder to the loft and gathered some of the wildflowers hanging from the rafters. This is goldenrod and it will dye a white wool a beautiful yellow, perfect for the yarn I want to spin. I want to weave a blanket for the woman who gave me these fine fat sheep. And yellow is her favorite color, said the weaver. Back in the cottage yard, the weaver put the goldenrod into the kettle hanging over the fire. He carefully removed the wool from the soapy kettle and put it into the kettle of clean water to rinse. And finally, he gently moved the wool into the steaming kettle of goldenrod. The water in that kettle was now a lovely yellow. The white wool slowly turned golden, and when it was just the right color the weaver wanted, he carefully removed it from the pot, squeezing out the water, and scattered the wool on the bushes to dry in the sun. Oh, look at my nice yellow wool, said the weaver. The next day, the mice watched the weaver pick pieces of hay and dirt out of the wool and he used hand carters to brush the wool into fluffy tufts. Then he sat in the cottage yard and spun. Whirr, 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 went the spindle as he twisted the wool into yarn. 
How does he do that? asked one little mice. It almost makes me dizzy, squeaked another. Look at all that fluffy wool, said a third. It would make a nice soft bed to sleep in. So much better than our scratchy hay bed. Do you think the weaver would mind if we just took some? Well, said Father Mouse, I suppose we could each take just a little. That night, while the weaver slept and the mice crept down to, into the yard, each took a paw full of fluffy yellow wool. One or two mice took very large pawfuls, and three and four mice snuck back for even more. By morning, the mice had turned their hay nest into a fluffy yellow bed of wool. Look how cozy they look in that yellow wool. They're just so happy it's better than the straw that's scratchy. Down in the yard, the weaver emerged from his cottage, yawning and stretching, and he gathered up the remaining wool to spin. Whirr, 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 whirr. And when he had finished spinning, he dressed his loom and began to weave. By evening, he was almost done with his blanket, but he was also out of yarn. Oh no, I was sure I had enough wool for this blanket, he said to himself. I had a lot of fleece. Now, that I, now what am I going to do? My friend is coming tomorrow to get her blanket, but I can't finish it. I have to call her in the morning and tell her not to come. Puzzled, tired, and disappointed, the weaver climbed the stairs and fell into bed. Did you hear that, said Mother Mouse? The weaver needs the wool we took for our beds, and he needs it to be spun into yarn by tomorrow, said Father Mouse. I think we can help, said the smallest, littlest mouse. We were watching him all day, and I think we could spin our fleece into yarn. But we can't use his big spindle, said Mother and Mouse. Wait there, wait here, said Father Mouse. I have an idea. And so Father Mouse scampered into the cottage and up the stairs to the weaver's bedroom. Quietly, quietly, he chewed and chewed. Back down the stairs he went, stopping to climb the, onto the counter for something else to help them spin. When it was outside to his waiting family, and off they went back to the barn. These toothpicks and buttons make perfect spindles, cried Mother Mouse, as the family spun and spun and spun their lovely yellow wool. Whirr, 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 whirr. The next morning, the weaver was surprised to find that every button on his shirt was missing. He could not only button his suspenders at one spot, which made his pants hang down at a very dangerous angle. What happened to my clothes? He almost tripped going down the stairs where, to his amazement, he saw eight beautiful skeins of yarn waiting on the floor along with his missing buttons and some toothpicks. Hooray, hooray, now I can finish the blanket, cried the weaver, and I bet I know who spun this yarn. Come in and let me thank you, he called. Next year, we can spin wool together. The weaver quickly finished the yellow blanket and gave it to his friend, who never knew just how many hands and paws had spun the yarn it had, wo had been woven with. Now, what a great story. Let's go back and talk a little bit about the equipment that those little mice used and the weaver used to make that yarn from the wool. So when you look at that, you can see that the weaver, as he sits in his chair, is using a spindle. And the mice, well, they're just so tiny, they can't possibly use that big spindle. So I do have um, a picture I can show you here. Uh, I have a spindle and I have some yellow wool. And as the spindle turns, it twists that yellow fiber into a thread. And after a length of thread has been spun, 
it's wound onto the shaft of the spindle and he starts all over again. But can you imagine now, I just happen to have a little mouse here. Look at the difference. How do you think that mouse could possibly use that big spindle? They can't. And so that's why Father Mouse, who was absolutely smart and ingenious, took the buttons off the weaver shirt and some toothpicks and made tiny spindles and they spun and they spun, remember, all night long and gave the wool back to the weaver. So thank you so much for joining us. We certainly enjoyed having you. I enjoyed reading to you. And uh, if you would like a copy of the book, uh, The Weaver's Surprise and also Spinning Tales, you can give us a call at Redstone Glen. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.